This is the final section of the exam and like parts B and C is worth 20 marks. Again, you'll have 30 minutes to respond to one question from a choice of two. Um, and typical questions on this unit are explore how far your chosen film or films are experimental in challenging conventional approaches to narrative. Explore how far cinematography contributes to the experimental identity of your chosen film or films. The focus of this section is experimental film and the focus film is Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction. This is a great film and despite a few problematic areas it is uh, one of my favourites so hopefully you'll enjoy studying it too. Um, the specialist study areas here are auteur theory and narrative. We'll therefore need to look at how this film uses narrative and how its use of narrative might be experimental. Uh, this could include a study of what is meant by a traditional narrative, um, which we'll need in order to look at how this film might or n might not deviate from that. We'll also need to look at Tarantino as an auteur. And in case you're unfamiliar with that term, an auteur is a film director who has a very clear, singular and distinctive creative vision or style, which can be clearly seen across their body of work. The idea is that an auteur director is individually responsible for nearly every aspect of the film and that their influence is uh, so strong that they develop uh, noticeable characteristics um, known as an auteur signature and that can be seen across their different films. It should be noted that there's plenty of opposition to this idea um, and those who oppose it justifiably argue that Film is a hugely collaborative medium and as such it's impossible to attribute everything to just one person with one artistic vision. For the purposes of the, this unit however we'll pretty much accept the auteur theory in a broad sense um, and your job will be to develop an understanding of how far Pulp Fiction does or doesn't show characteristics of an auteur signature. Um, so in preparation for that it would definitely be an excellent idea to watch other Tarantino films. In my mind, you can't go too far wrong with any of them. They're all really entertaining, even the worst of them. Uh, but um, I think a good film to start with would be Reservoir Dogs, uh, Tarantino's first film, um, which bears you know quite a few similarities with Pulp Fiction, um, or perhaps Inglorious Bastards, um, which. Um, is a later film, but um, one which is often sort of considered um, sort of Tarantino's masterpiece. Um, I, th I think that they're, they're all good, however. So let's look at the context of Pulp Fiction. This is Tarantino's second film after 1992's Reservoir Dogs, uh, his debut. Um, Tarantino had this immediate impact on the film industry um, and it was massive. Um, he was seen as this sort of rebellious young filmmaker working with uh, low budgets and making these hyper-violent streetwise films which captured the spirit of the time perfectly. His style of writing and filmmaking was seen as sort of irreverent and, and cool. Uh, it broke loads of the sort of traditional rules which were seen as standard in mainstream film. Um, a big part of his initial success was his ability to make a low budget film to very high standards. Pulp Fiction cost only eight and a half million dollars to make, which obviously is a lot of money, but in relative terms for a major uh, feature film, is really quite a low budget. It did have an additional 10 million for marketing, but even with that considered, it made nearly 213 million dollars back uh, worldwide and was the first American independent film to earn over $100 million at the US box office. So whilst Tarantino was clearly popular with audiences, he also won over the critics, uh, winning both the Palme d'Or at Cannes and the Oscar for the best original screenplay. Um, Tarantino does have many detractors, however, and his work is not without its problems. Um, 
it's well worth reading up on this film in particular to see the way it was perceived at the time and how it is sort of perceived now by different critics. It's good to look at opposing points of view, those who sort of like it and those who don't like it. Um, there's some links to some interesting articles below, uh, but one of the areas that often comes up is Tarantino's use of race and in particular uh, language around race and racially insensitive language. Opinions are divided over whether this is acceptable or not, as it could be argued that the characters who use this language in his films would do so. Um, these people are criminals and sort of lowlifes and so on, or people who you know would be using this sort of language all the time. Um, it's their world. It does remain difficult, however, to watch Tarantino's character in particular in Pulp Fiction use this sort of language so freely. Pulp Fiction's legacy is also somewhat compromised by its association with the disgraced producer Harvey Weinstein. Uh, he ran Miramax, Miramax Films at the time um, and Weinstein was very enthusiastic about this project and he was instrumental in getting it made after it was dropped by its initial production company Columbia TriStar. Columbia were uncomfortable with the level of violence and the bad language in the film. Pulp Fiction was, of course, an enormous hit for Miramax and it really sort of made them um, because they had an awful lot riding on this film. It was the first film they had fully funded. Um, so it also gave Tarantino an enormous amount of artistic freedom for his future projects. As he was such a bankable commodity, he could pretty much do what he wanted from there on in. Uh, one of the ways that Tarantino kept the costs low was by paying all of the cast members the same weekly rate, regardless of profile. So although he had some really sort of big name actors on in the cast, like Har Harvey Keitel, uh, Bruce Willis, uh, Christopher Walken, um, he paid them all the same, on the same rate. And the higher profile actors were attracted to the film because they wanted to work with Tarantino they were attracted by his credibility and his sort of um, his star was rising so they wanted to be attached to such a sort of innovative and interesting new style of filmmaking uh, it was actually Bruce Willis's involvement which was in instrumental in securing funding for this film uh, Pulp Fiction's success led to a new interest in independent cinema and in the crime drama in, partic in particular it was incredibly influential and there were suddenly tons of films being made about smart talking gangsters fractured time frames and so on uh, its influence can even be seen in the simpsons episode 22 short films about springfield which again is well worth a watch so it's important to know some background and context of the film as this will help you contextualize the more complex aspects as well as tarantino's status as an auteur filmmaker but we will get on to those specific uh, specialist study areas in different videos. So I'll see you over on those.